people don't smoke because they are poorly educated or unaware of the unhealthy effects of smoking tobacco. They smoke, and I access this is the, I'll give you an example of a conversation I have with a patient. I will say to them, listen, I understand that you're not stupid and that you understand that, that smoking tobacco is unhealthy for you. And I believe in my heart that if there was some way that you could smoke less and, and carry on and get some of the same gratifications or pleasures or, or uh, positive benefits that you feel you're getting from smoking, that, that you would do that. People smoke because they like it. They like the effect it has on them. Whether it's the effect of the nicotine and the fact that nicotine can be uh, uh, have some positive effects in the brain in terms of calming and concentration and alertness and uh, you know, there's a reason why people want cigarette breaks. It's not just a break from work. It's because it, it, it actually helps them relax. It's a little bit of a paradoxical effect because technically nicotine is, is thought of as a stimulant and yet it actually calms people down. Talk to a smoker and they'll tell you that. But what they want is the whole social activity that's involved, the oral activity that's involved. This is a very viable alternative to smoking tobacco cigarettes. And we need to appeal to the intelligence of the American people because they know that this is an un that smoking tobacco is an and using tobacco, smokeless tobacco as well, by the way, also causes cancer. This is not necessarily a, a substitute for smokeless tobacco, but if, if someone who uses smokeless tobacco is willing to try using an electronic cigarette and they find that to be satisfactory to them, then that's a healthier alternative for them as well. So I think like many politicians say, we need to give the American public credit for their intelligence and any intelligent American knows that smoking tobacco is bad for them and this ought to be a much healthier alternative. No, nicotine absolutely does not cause cancer. That's been categorically proven. What causes cancer is tar. It's the burnt organic substance that's deposited in the respiratory tract when a person inhales cigarette smoke or tobacco smoke. Nicotine is a chemical which is contained in tobacco, in tobacco leaves and released in tobacco smoke, which acts on the brain and has actually a number of pleasant and beneficial effects on the brain. Nicotine itself has been known uh, about for uh, many decades. And nicotine by itself, to the best of my knowledge, has never been proven to cause disease. It does have a st slight stimulant effect though. And so, of course, if a person should overdose somehow, on nicotine by consuming massive doses of it, then one could imagine they could have some of the symptoms associated with overstimulation, like a rapid heart rate or an elevation in their blood pressure. But I have heard some people allege that nicotine can cause heart attacks and strokes. That has never been demonstrated in any kind of evidence-based peer-reviewed literature in the medical literature. You won't find anything like that. So nicotine is not what causes disease. Nicotine is what gets people addicted to smoking and using tobacco. If you can separate out the nicotine from the tobacco, then you remove the disease-causing elements in tobacco smoke. That's why nicotine products, many of them, are already approved by the FDA and available without a prescription. There are perhaps four or five different ways that you can purchase and use nicotine. If nicotine caused cancer by itself, I don't think the FDA would have approved it as an over-the-counter drug. Based on the, the research that I've been provided with and, uh, from the scientific literature, there I can't find anything that's released in smoke in the uh, vapor that could cause disease. Now, let me qualify that. Many physicians would, dis would talk about addiction as a disease, and I would agree with that. Addiction can be, qua qua can be classified as a disease, and I think the disease model of addiction is an excellent way to approach people who are addicted to the use of substances or behaviors that are harming them in some way or, or, or negatively impacting their lives. But nicotine alone, an addiction to nicotine, only causes harm in association with tobacco use. So uh, if, if you want to play a semantics game, you can say, yes, the nicotine causes addiction or sustains an addiction that a person may have from smoking cigarettes. It doesn't solve that problem. But then the, the next logical question is, well, what's the problem with being addicted to nicotine if you're not using a tobacco product? And in my opinion, there is no problem. If I have a smoker that tells me that they've completely switched 
from using tobacco products to using a nicotine-only product, whether it's Nicorette gum or a patch or a nasal spray or a lozenge or a device like an electronic cigarette, and they can't seem to get themselves to stop using the nicotine substitute, I congratulate them on having made a healthier choice, on having made a lifestyle choice that will significantly reduce their risk of, of uh, heart disease, uh, heart attack, stroke, and there's a long list of cancers and other diseases that are, that are caused by tobacco use. One of the other very toxic chemicals that's released in tobacco smoke that has no appearance at all, is not present in, in, this, in the vapor released from an electronic cigarette, is carbon monoxide. I think most people will, will know in the general public that carbon monoxide is something that's bad for you. That's what comes out of car exhaust. That's how people who have died in, in, in accidental you know, or, or intentional use of a, a inhalation of, carbon, of a car exhaust have died. Carbon monoxide is a dangerous chemical and cigarette smoke contains carbon monoxide. The vapor released by an electronic cigarette does not. It's a very simple vapor. After that extremely long-winded answer, the short-winded answer is there's nothing that I know of in the vapor release that has any disease-causing properties. There is a substance which is really just a substrate around which a vapor can form. The same way clouds need dust particles to form the water vapor around the dust particles, in order to form any type of vapor, there has to be something around which the, for the water to condense. So the propylene glycol is the inert chemical that passes in and out of the human body without being unchanged and with no effect. And it's been studied as far back as 1946. I have a paper on my desk from 1946 that shows that it was studied and had no effect on human beings.